Hello and welcome back to Historical Context, where today we're continuing our 16th century explorers unit, and we're going to move on and talk about the Narvaez expedition of 1527. And the story is very long and very fascinating, so it's going to cover multiple episodes over the next several weeks. In fact, I'm still reading the 200 plus page journal uh, about the Narvaez expedition. The, the writing was actually done by a man named Alvar Nunez Cabeza de Vaca, and I'll probably just call him de Vaca. He was a Spanish explorer who was a member of the 1527 Narvaez expedition. Panfilo de Narvaez was the leader of the expedition and in 1520, he was sent to Mexico by the governor of Cuba to put down an invasion by Hernan Cortez. This is important for those of you studying this era of history because it's often conceived in people's minds that Spanish explorers simply walked into different native villages and slaughtered essentially the villagers or enslaved them. But in the case of Hernan Cortez, who was doing these things, the provisional or the colonial government in the Caribbean did not approve of Cortez and actually sent other Spanish people to stop him. Narvaez lost that battle and in fact he lost more than just the battle he lost an eye in the expedition and was taken prisoner despite this charles the first who was the king of spain and the holy roman emperor still authorized narvaez to do an expedition in 1527 and that expedition's primary objective was to colonize florida the expedition started with approximately 600 men and it left Spain on June 27, 1527. They arrived in Santo Domingo on the island of Hispaniola and stayed for 45 days to supply themselves for the next leg of the voyage. At this point, 140 men deserted, deserted the expedition to stay on the island because, quote, they were led astray by promises of the country. And I think this is interesting considering our previous discussions on Hispaniola and how it had become a modern day gold rush. While in Santo Domingo, a man approaches Narvaez and tells him that supplies are available in the town of Trinidad, which is located in the south central part of the island of Cuba. So Narvaez and his men head in that direction. In Trinidad, Narvaez orders a boat to go to shore to get supplies. And De Vaca is a member of that little boat going to shore. And he's nervous about the dangers of the water currents in that port. Uh, this is something that is infamous to Spanish explorers. A letter comes via canoe for De Vaca to go on shore and collect supplies. The weather was looking pretty ominous. Let's have a look at what he says. They spent that day and Sunday greatly distressed by two contrary storms. Then the rain and storm increased in violence at the village as well as the sea, and all the houses and the churches fell down, and we had to go about seven or eight men locking in arms at a time to prevent the wind from carrying us off. So it appears as if Trinidad was hit head on by a hurricane. In fact, him using the language of two contrary storms would indicate that the eye actually passed right over Trinidad and the wind in the eye of a hurricane stops but then starts fiercely blowing up in a separate direction so it sounds like they were hit head-on from a hurricane the next day they went back to the shore and they found no boats in sight and they saw buoys which indicated to them that some of the ships may have sank. 
one boat was found on top of a tree and two men that were a part of that boat were found dead and in total when they added everything up 60 men were killed by the hurricane and 20 horses were lost. Devaka stayed on the island until November 5th trying to forage whatever he could uh, to find for food and on November 5th Narvaez ends up showing up with four vessels. The governor who is uh, essentially Narvaez in the writings puts Devaka in charge of these ships and asks that he sail to another port town and, and he does this and stays there until February 20th 1528. Narvaez puts Devaka in charge of his ships and has him sail to another port town in which Devaka does this and stays there until February 20th 1528. So we're already seven months into this expedition and absolutely nothing has gone right. Uh, men have abandoned ship, a hurricane has hit and killed 60 men. Uh, they're pretty much down to almost half of what they started with and they haven't even gotten anywhere near where they're uh, intending to go. Uh, so they're down to these men, four vessels, and Narvaez comes along after sending Devaka ahead and brings with him a brig, another ship, in which he bought while he was in Trinidad, and he brings that over with him. They're getting ready to leave, and they're not even out of port or, or not far from land, and they run these vessels ashore on a sandbar. And they're stranded on this sandbar for 15 days. Of all the things that would come along to help push them off, it was a storm. It's a combination of bad luck and good luck, I guess, to get them back on their way. And they end up just west of Havana, where they cut north from that point just west of Havana to get to what is now modern-day Tampa Bay. So on April 12th, 1528, practically 10 months after they left Spain, they arrive in Florida near modern-day Tampa Bay. So let's see what, uh, what they have to say about it. And I will tell you, as they came in, they immediately encountered natives. So let's have a look. On that same day, the clerk, Alonzo Enriquez, left and went on an island in the bay and called the Indians who came and were with him a good while and by way of exchange they gave him fish and some venison. The day following the governor disembarked and as we arrived at the huts we found them abandoned and deserted. So natives were there, they had a pleasant exchange with one man and the next day when they went when they went on to the island to look around some more uh, the natives had deserted the island it shows that the natives probably weren't trusting of the Spaniards in the expedition and probably were a little nervous and I want people to keep in mind from our previous unit that Ponce de Leon had landed not far south from where uh, De Vaca and Narvaez had landed. There may be a reputation starting to gather in regards to how Spaniards are going to treat these natives once they arrive. So the following day, Narvaez raises flags on the island and it is proclaimed the property of Spain and Narvaez declares himself governor. And I guess that was likely part of the uh, royal authorization of Charles I. Fast forward now to the 15th of April, another day passes by, and the natives of the island return. So this is interesting. They're gone for a couple of days. They're probably thinking these guys are going to move on their way, but in fact these guys move in and the natives return. The visitors who are there, the Spaniards, can't understand what the natives are saying to them, but the Indians gesture to them in a way that it was threatening and was demanding that they leave. So does Narvaez leave? No. In fact, he decides the next day to go inland and to take with him 40 men and six horses. They travel inland and they come upon a bay inland Florida and they probably didn't go far 
uh, before they turned around and came back. Then they decide to go back in again, and they come upon four natives whom they ask where to uh, where maize is or corn and those four natives take them to their village let's see what uh, uh, Devaka writes they led us to their village and there they showed us some that was yet fit to be gathered and they're talking about maize there we found many boxes for merchandise from Castilla uh oh merchandise from Spain in every one of them was a corpse covered with painted deer hides. The commissary thought this to be some idolatrous practice, so he burnt the boxes with the corpses. So this is completely bizarre. You have merchandise boxes from Spain. You have no idea where they came from in this village. And inside them were corpses. And this does not deter Narvaez in any way. In fact, on May 1st, he pulls some men aside, including Devaka, and suggests that the party continue an inland march with uh, shadowing of the ships along the coastline. And Devaka is concerned about the fact that the ships don't have safe harbor. That's one problem. The amount of supplies they have is another issue. They don't have adequate supplies for the men that they have. And there's this great unknown of the lands within. I mean, you're, you're in an area where somebody just a few years earlier unsuccessfully tried to penetrate inland, ended up being killed. The expedition ended up being expelled and was a total failure. And now you're wanting to do the same thing with inadequate supplies and an inability to properly find harbor for the ships. And that's important because if you're in a situation where you need to fall back to your ships, you need those ships to be able to harbor properly so that you can get to them. So uh, Devaka shares these concerns. Uh, Narvaez hears two other opinions that are of similar concern and then he decides to go with his original course of action anyways which is again rather unfortunate considering the circumstances that lie ahead so Narvaez takes 300 men and marches for 15 days and in these 15 days they come upon a river they ford the river and then discover a small village of 200 natives. The natives were a little friendlier and they led the group to their to their corn and at this point Devaka says that he argues with Narvaez about whether or not they should seek a harbor. Again, Devaka is very concerned about ships finding safe harbor and Narvaez agrees to allow De Vaca to go in search of a safe harbor and return to Narvaez with instructions. The decision is made to continue the inland march. And here's something that occurs that should be considered an ominous signal. At the very beginning of this journey inland, native scouts were brought with this group. Uh, of the first group of natives and these native scouts desert the group so that should be a signal of trouble right there and on June 17th they come upon an Indian chief who is presented to them in a rather unique way he was being carried on the back of another Indian and he was preceded by a flute procession and these flutes were made of reeds, much like a modern-day clarinet. So it's an interesting introduction, to say the least. And Narvaez tells the chief that they are searching for the Appalachian. And the Appalachian are a tribe which have rumored from tribe one that they came into to have gold. So Narvaez is searching for gold, and he's searching for it from the Appalachian. The chief indicates to Narvaez that he is an enemy of the Appalachian 
and would gladly accompany Narvaez if Narvaez were to work against them. So they continue on their quest with this new native chief with them and some members of his tribe. And then slowly and surely, a, a few bad things start to happen. In one case, they were crossing a river and a member of the expedition drowned. In another case, they were randomly attacked by natives with arrows and a member of the expedition was shot. But finally on June 25th, they come upon the Appalachian and by this time, the group of men was hungry. They were fatigued. They had already suffered several mishaps. So now they're ready to essentially march straight into the village and confront the Appalachian. So what happens next when they do this? We'll find out next time on Historical Context.